Blessings, everyone. Blessings, everyone. Guys, we're going to start in just about maybe 60 seconds. If you don't mind, that you give us 60 seconds and we'll start in about 60 seconds. Hallelujah. All right, guys, can you hear me? Thumbs up, can you hear me?
Okay, guys, thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, we appreciate your presence here. Uh, we are here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to dive into our uh, June month's prophetic seminar. Um, this is something that we've been doing ever since the inception of the year, and so we're glad to be here again today. And um, happy Juneteenth. Yes, happy Juneteenth. Um, without further ado, you guys, we're going to jump right into our session. I totally forgot about this weekend being Juneteenth weekend, so you guys might have some plans. Um, so we're going to jump right into the session. Um, as said before, we've been having uh, prophetic seminars uh, since January, and today's topic is centered around our lying prophets, false prophets. Oftentimes you hear people label prophets who may have missed it, who may have seen correctly, but their interpretation was off and they automatically label them as being false. And so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about that. Um, we have some awesome guests here. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, for being here with us. We have Prophetess Ulyssa Jones-Brown. We also have Missionary Jasmine Miller. And we have Queen Jamia that's in the house that's going to be um, leading us into, of course, our session, uh, intercession, as well as song, Ministry of Song. Um, so without further ado, God bless you, Sister Jasmine. Glad to have you on today in the session. Sister Jay Miller, are you on? Can you hear yes, me? I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Good to have you with us. Blessings. Happy to be here with everyone. Amen. Jasmine, where are you from? You mean where, I, where do I live or where, <laughs> where did I used to reside? Um, I've, I've been a little bit of everywhere. Originally from um, born in California, then from California went uh, to live overseas in the Philippines and then from the Philippines to New York, then New York to Savannah, Back to New York, back to Savannah. So Savannah is where I reside. Awesomeness, awesome sauce. Um, so you're going to be leading our um, intercessory prayer today. Um, at what point in your life did you start developing a passion for prayer? I wouldn't say just a passion for prayer. I would say more a necessity. Okay. I learned early on in uh, ministry and at um, the ministry that I'm at, uh, one thing that we learned first and foremost was uh, prayer was our connection and our communication to the Lord. So if you're not praying, you ain't talking to him. So um, that is one thing. So I won't just say a passion, but, but I would say just a necessity that I've learned along the way that is necessary for us to pray. Awesome sauce, of course, according to First Thess Thessalonians, Five and 17, it says that you are to pray without ceasing or never cease to pray. So I agree with you um, that we should have prayer as a necessity and a passion, I'll say. Amen. Um, how Amen. has having a life of prayer helped to change your life? Um, I would say, to be honest, prayer has built my faith. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when we face different things, I'll just say personally face different things. You could kind of feel yourself pulling back from prayer because you're kind of upset. You might be a little uh, angry at the way that God is kind of directing your life. And then you pull back from prayer, not realizing that prayer is your lifeline. And then without prayer, um, it's, it's like the blood that flows through your veins. Um, if you stop praying, the blood stops flowing. Um, so I would say that's probably like the biggest thing with the prayer awesome. part. Awesome sauce, awesome sauce. Without further ado, ma'am, do you mind leading us into intercessory prayer, please? 
All right, so everyone, if you don't mind, we're gonna put the phones on mute and on the tail end, we will open them back up so we could have a corporate praise, amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, in your merciful name, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, we bless you and we magnify you this afternoon and we give your name praise, we give your name glory, we give your name honor. And we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for being our battle axe, God. And we thank you for being our strong tower, God. We thank you for being our mighty counselor, God. Oh God, we thank you for being our Alpha and Omega, we're our beginning and our end, God. God, we just thank you for leading us on straight paths, God. We thank you for protecting us from danger unseen. But this afternoon, we just come to give your name glory. We come to magnify who you are, God. We just bless your name, God. God, and we thank you for the prophetic sessions, God. And we bless your name, God, for Prophetess Ashlyn and everyone on the line, God. But above all, God, we thank you, God, for the discerning spirit that you have given all of us, God. God, to discern truth, God, to discern who is the false prophet, God, and who is the real prophet, God. God, and we thank you, God, for allowing us to decipher, God, the wheat from the tear, God. God, in your word, you said they have to grow together, God. But God, in the end, we'll know who stands, God, and who is the real ones, God. And we thank you, God, for giving us eyes to see, God, and ears to hear, oh God. God, we just bless your name, God, that we won't end this season. We won't ignore anything that you allow us to see, God. God, we won't be like the ostrich and put our head in the sand, God. God, but we will stand strong, God, against what's wrong, God, and, and bless your name of what, what is right, God. God, and we just bless your name and we give you glory and we give you honor, God. God, that in this last day, God, God, that you said people would take heed to seducing spirits, God. God, that they'll fall prey to those that really don't walk in your way, but those that are cunning, God, and those that are crafty, God. God, and we're asking you, God, to protect us, God, from those people, God. God, protect us, God, that they won't even be able to walk in our sphere, God. God, in our circle, God. God, that they won't even be able to be in our midst, God. God, that those seducing spirits won't take hold to us, God. Those that stand, God, for your truth, God. God, those that stand, God, in your way, God. God, that we don't lean on our own understanding, God, but we will lean on you, God, to direct our paths, God, in this season, God, and forevermore. We just bless your name, God, for your protection, God, your hedge of protection, God, a God against our own thoughts, God, and what we think, God, God, and what we feel and not what you say, God. God, because though we know we don't war, or in the flesh, God, but we actually war in the spirit for the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through you, God, to pulling down the strongholds, God. God, and we know that we cannot use carnal weapons in this battle, God. In our day-to-day, -day, we can't use carnal weaponry, God. We can't use gossip, and we can't use sage, and we can't use black magic. We can't use horoscopes. We can't use the things that the world is using. We can't utilize their tactics, God. God, to fight in this daily battle, God. God, in this daily war, that we're in, God. God, and we ask you, God, God, to just empower us, God, endow us, God. God, with your power, God, so we can fight, God, that we'll pick up our sword, God. God, and we'll pick up our shield, God. God, that we'll be able to war in the spirit, God. God, like I said, so we won't have to war in the flesh, God. And we know if we war in the flesh, God, that we shall surely die, God. God, because you said those, God, God, that said sin, God, God, when it takes hold, God, that we know that death will come. So God, we ask you, God, to keep us, God, walking in the spirit, God, that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, God. God, because you said there's no good thing in our flesh, God. God, there's no good thing that dwells in thing, God. God, so God, we just ask you, God, to keep us on today, God. God, so we can see, God, with the eyes that you see with God. God, like you told the, le the guy with leprosy, God, God, to take the, the clay in the mud and wipe it over his eyes so he could see clearly. God, God, we're asking you that we see clearly, God, in this season, God, that we can see clearly. We'll see the things that you want us to see, God. God, that we don't ignore it, God. God, that we don't let the things, God, that are happening around us and in our families, God, pull us away from you, God. God, because we know that that is the tactic of the enemy, God. God, we know that it's, that's his tactic, God. God, so we ask you, God, God, to just rest upon each and every one on this line, God. God, in their mind, God, 
in their home, God. God, that they won't stray away from you, God. God, we know it's not by power or by might, God. God, we know it's by your spirit, oh God. God, and we're asking you that your spirit, God, just rest on us, God. God, that we know which way to go, God. God, that we know which way to go, God. God, that we know which way to go, oh God. God, that we don't go down the wrong path, God. God, for the things that we see, God, or the things that we hear, God. But we're asking you, God, to lead us and guide us, God, in all truth. We're asking you to lead us and guide us in the way that you want us to go, God. The people that should be in our circle, God. God, the people that should be connected to us, God. God, that connectivity, God. God, it matters, God. God, we ask you, God, to connect us with the right people in this season, God. Not just how they look or what they have, God, but the people that we're supposed to be connected to even in this season, God, that will lead and guide us, God, to where you want us to be, God, to our destiny, God. God, we just bless your name and we magnify you, oh God. God, we just give your name glory, God. God, we just magnify you, God. God, we just magnify you, oh God. Glory to your name, God. God, we magnify you, God. God, that the words that we say out of our mouth, God, God, the prophetic utterance, God, God, the words that come out of our mouth, God, that they'll come from you, God, God, that we won't be like the prophet and kings, God, God, that told the other prophet, the Lord told me to go this way and for you to come follow me. And the prophet followed him and the prophet wound up getting eaten by the lion, God, God, we don't want to get eaten by the lion because we went away that you didn't tell us to go, God, God, we don't want to be eaten, God, we don't want to be led astray stray, God, because what somebody else said, God, God, but we want to walk in your truth, God. We want to walk in your authority and your power, God, God. And because of that, we know, God, God, that we have to have our ears clean, God, God, we have to have clean hands and a pure heart, God, God. And we're asking you, God, to purify our hearts, God, God, that we could hear you, God, purify our hands and wash them, God, wash up with, wash us with his up so we might be clean, God, God, we want to be clean, God, so we can hear from you, God, that we won't be those that lead others astray, God, with our life or with what we say, God. God, so we're just asking you, God, to keep us, God. We're just asking you, God, to manifest your power upon us. And even on the line today, God bless prophetess Ulyssa, God. We ask you to keep her, God, keep her mind in perfect peace. We ask you to bless her home and her marriage and her household and everything that she touches, God. We thank you, God, God, for the powerhouse that's going to sing, God. God, for Jemiah, God, we thank you for her life, God, and we thank you for everyone that decided to join on today. We ask, God, that you just bless them, God, that you bestow your power upon them. In your merciful name, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you so very much for your ministration. Um, that was a very, very powerful and a very on-time relevant prayer. Thank you so very much um, for leading us into intercession today. Amen. Without further ado, we're going to move right ahead. Uh, Queen Jamia, are you on? Yes. Good morning. Yes, Queen. Good how are you? <laughs> how you doing? How are you? I'm well. Good to see you, ma'am. Good to see you, too. Yes, indeed. So, Queen, I am so happy to have you with us today. We've been trying to get you for the last two sessions. <laughs> and then, but the Lord uh, so fit for you to be with us today. I'm so geeked because um, I met Queen. Uh, she and I was uh, attending Oral Roberts University, and we were in the choir there called Souls of Fire that was um, put together by uh, Bishop Carton Pearson. And um, everybody else was singing, but then Queen began to sing, and I began to say, wait a minute, that's the sound. <laughs> and um, ever, <laughs> since then, <laughs> ever since then, I have been so um, just amazed at how she can just modulate her voice and just, you know, just bring out that sound of soothe is what I like to call her, amen, um, <laughs> a voice of soothe. 
So Queen, um, where are you from? Or where so are you I'm, right now? Yeah, I'm from Indiana. <laughs> I'm from Hammond slash Gary, Indiana. Um, I'm currently in Indianapolis with my sister. Uh, Princess Tiffany's on the line. That's my sis. Hey. And um, I currently live, though, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So oh, okay. I'm working um, as assistant principal at uh, Kip Tulsa University Prep High School. Yeah. So I, I don't even get the chance. I, I don't even get a chance to, to I worship, but I don't get a chance to sing other places a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for having me on, Ashley. Like, this yes. is amazing. No, um, I can't problem. wait to the message today because I just can't wait to hear it. there's so much like cancel culture you know today right. um and if you say something wrong if you're not perfect right. then all of a sudden you get canceled I'm just like absolutely I can't I can't wait to hear a uh, prophetess uh, is it you Lisa yes yes I know she's gonna bring it so I'm, I was I thought I was gonna be at the end so I was like yes I'm gonna get all this good like teaching yes. out you know she brought it into prayer but I was like okay let me go ahead and grab this guitar then I'm glad I was ready <laughs> they be ready in and out of season, period. Okay. Um, Queen, I have one honestly, question to ask you, if you don't mind. Um, uh, when, <laughs> you can talk. When did you realize that you had a gift to sing? Hmm. So, I've always wanted to sing, but I never did sound good. <laughs> and so, I can't believe that. I would start singing. And my mom will be like, thank you for being quiet. Um, the news is on. Um, like, I it just did not sound good. So I used to go out um, and practice in the guitar oh, gosh, that we had because no one wanted to hear me sing. Like, wow. Tiff, ask Tiff. I was not a good singer. Tiffany was a singer, and they always gave her the microphone at church. Um, I would get the microphone, they'd be like, uh-uh, and they would take it from me and give it to my sister because I just wasn't the singer. I wanted to, but... Wow. It's great. I started just like inching my way from the guitar, from, from the garage and just like, you know, started like singing in falsetto and like, I'll give you peace. They're like, oh, you can sing. I'm like, I can. <laughs> and somebody told me I could sing at school. And I was like, okay. And then I didn't pick up the guitar until, until college. And I mean, I just pluck into some sounds, right? I, I need lessons. I'm just self-taught. So what? if you're a guitar player, you know that I'm faking it, you know, but it's okay. Um, I just, I just want to be, be used by God, you know. Amen. So what will you be ministering to us today? Yes. I'm going to sing uh, my worship by Phil Thompson. Okay. Um, and this has been, it's been a song that's been on my heart for just a while. Um, and just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, but my parents, the reason why I wasn't able to join the last session, my parents had COVID. And so I had to come home and just uh, care, care for them. I took them to the hospital. They were in the hospital for about um, about a week. My mom, my dad, maybe about five days, almost a week, and just take care of the house. My brother, everyone in the house, my little brother had COVID too. So I just came back and took care of them. And it took a lot out of me. Um, I'm like, God, I only the only thing I have to give you is my work. Yes. I didn't have anything else. And I think like me pouring everything out, it was like, ooh. And so um, in order to get refilled, and I'm still being refilled from that that experience, it's like worship has been the thing that has filled me up. Even when I can't sing myself, like just listening to worship mm -hmm. is like helping to fill and restore my bucket. So, yes, ma'am. Wow, wow, wow. Well, I am so elated to have you here with us today and um without further ado let's welcome the ministry of queen jamia thank you so much ashley oh thank you jesus you lord i'm gonna go ahead and put my phone on mute right now because i heard it too <laughs> here we go you Can worship you for me, hey, for all the things you've done for me. Well, oh, no one can worship you for me. Here's 
my work All of my worship, Daddy received my worship, all of my worship, for you, Lord, you are worthy. Let's sit along with you again. And no one can worship you for. Oh, no, 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 no,
ahead and lift your voice and just sing a song to him. It can be your own song. It don't even have to sound cute. Just open up your mouth and say, Hallelujah. God right there. Amen. My God. Queen, that was amazing. Wow. Oh my God. Can you guys give her some hearts, please, or some claps or something, some, some snaps or something? That was hot. Seriously. Queen, do you have anything that's out that we can get? Like um, iTunes. I know Antoine and you were working together. So I know you got something out there. Hopefully you do. I have one song out um, okay. and I'll, I'll put it in the chat. I'll put okay. It in the chat. Awesomeness. Thank you so much. I do, do, do so love you. Thank you again. Also, Prophetess, I want to call her Prophetess Miela. Amen. Um, Missionary Jasmine, thank you so much for your prayer. We are so delighted. Amen. Well, we're um, at the point of receiving the word of the Lord. Um, from none other than Prophetess Yalissa Brown. Uh, woman of God, are you there? Ah. Prophetess Yalissa Brown, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. Oh, 
Amen. Glory. Listen, now, I, I mean, look, I know gooder and gooder is not a word, but it's about to get gooder and gooder. I know Jasmine done set the foundation with intercessory prayer. Then Queen came and laid some icing on top of that. My God, can we get it any better? Amen. Glory be to God. But no, I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you on. I know that God has given you such a needy word. Amen. For this platform. Amen, Monique. That's right. It's about to get gooder. Yes. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Um, but I am so happy to have you on. I had an opportunity to speak with you personally and just the revelation that God had given you on today's topic is absolutely phenomenal. And um, glory be to God. I don't want to hold you long, but I do want to ask you the same question just for someone that's out there that may want to contact you later. Where are you located or where are you from, rather? I am from Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Um, let me see what else I can ask you. Amen. So you're from Savannah, Georgia. Amen. Prophetess, tell us when did you receive Christ yeah. as your Lord and personal Savior? Oh, wow. Okay. So I grew up in the church, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was raised um, with my dad and my his mother. She helped raised me so of course um me and my other sisters we were uh, raised up in the church but so i knew church but my own personal relationship i received with the lord um i was at the beautiful fine age of 21. Mm, glory be to god and at, okay so was it at age 21 that you found out that god was calling you into the prophetic office or did you find out earlier or was it after you got saved or after it was actually after i gave my life to christ and um i always knew i was different growing up as a child um if you're a prophetic person, this just didn't happen to you overnight. Like it had to already be something, you know, embedded and um, imparted into you. But you just have to um, be able to know the timing of when you accepted the call. And so it was back in 2009 when I embraced my prophetic call because the prophetic was always there even when at 21 I gave my life to Christ and I started you know um developing my relationship and learning the things of God um I was drawn to the prophets in the Bible mm. and still didn't have a full revelation and a full understanding of that yes and so um it wasn't until 2009 um, when the Lord dealt with me, I, I remember being on the phone with one of my friend girls, bless her heart, she's going to be with the Lord. And as I was laying in the bed, I had my eyes closed. And as I had my eyes closed, the Lord showed me two eagles. And the eagles was just sowing in the realm of the spirit. And I said, whoa. And as he showed me the eagles sowing, I asked her, I said, could they say, I said, what does that mean when the eagle soul? And she had a dream book. And so she, um, it was a biblical dream book because we have to be careful even with that. And um, through the book, she gave the interpretation of what the eagles represented. Uh -huh. And um, when she gave me that information, I began to hear the Lord say to me, now I need you to answer the call. Wow. And I said, oh, God. And he said, I need you to answer my call as the prophet, mm. but not just any prophet, not the prophet of the world, the prophet into the kingdom of God. And I knew then I said, OK, Holy Spirit, okay. I said, I, I accept it and I received it. OK. And um. Amen. Glory be to God. One last question just before you move into your session. Um, how did 
answering the call as a prophet change your life hallelujah oh my god and the lives of those that are connected to you so how did it change and your life hallelujah glory be to god yes so <laughs> answering the call um it really shifts me into a place to realize that um i have to live a sold out lifestyle for christ not just taking on the salvation because once you receive him and accept him as your lord and savior you're going to have the salvation but then you have to advance from just having the salvation into learning to live the lifestyle and living it according to the biblical standard Ooh. not how you want to live it yes but living in the biblical standard of how God has called us as his sons and daughters to live a lifestyle of holiness, a lifestyle of purity. Um, and just, you know, um, even for my children, I have four children and I have a bunch of nieces and nephews. And so, you know, even just accepting the call and even from, from different family members and stuff, um, I had to realize accepting the call as a prophet it's like a, 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 a double light being don't being um, connected onto you because they're already looking at you when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. But then now when you open up and you say you are a prophet, you are deemed to be watched. And so um, I had to really, really understand and study and learn about, you know, the prophets in the Bible. But then I had to also learn and understand the prophet that God has called me to be. Amen. Amen. Man, this is already good. Amen. Amen, <laughs> everybody. This is prophetess Yalissa Brown. Um, let us receive her ministry. Jones. Jones, I'm sorry. She's <laughs> married yeah, now. You, yeah, yeah, I you, yeah. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about that. Amen. Let us um, welcome her ministry, amen, as she talks to us about, is there a difference between lying prophets and false prophets? Amen. God bless you. Go forth, woman of God. Amen. So I just want to thank each and every one of you. And um, Prophetess Ashley, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm excited about what God has to say. And um, the revelation that he's given me in this, uh, um, you took me to another round. <laughs> God allowed you to take me into another round um, and to really, really, you know, um, be, be more serious, even the more, you know, because now we're in a time where, you know, people hear profit and they gonna either gravitate to you or they're gonna shun away from you. And so we're going to find out about that um, as we go into the studies of what God has opened me up to. And so I want to first give you the definition of the word lie. Um, and a lie is a statement known to be untrue. Um, and it is used to mislead. You can mislead people. Um, you can break, take them into deception. Um, you can take them into false mannerism um, and, and you can really damage their life if you're not, you know, careful to be truthful and honest. You can damage their life. You can mess them up um, versus the definition of uh, the word false or, you know, um, it's a statement that is untrue, but not necessarily to mislead a person. Um, as a statement given by someone who does not know it is true. So already right there, you have to be ever so careful of, um, as to what you allow your ears to adhere. Um, nowadays, we're in a season where people get roused up and you have what I call profit junkies. They at a place to where they don't trust and hear God from themselves, but they search out to find the prophet um, to get confirmation, if you will, or to get a word that would seem right 
to um, facade their spirit and what they want to hear. But a true prophet of God, when they tell you what thus says the Lord, it's going to either make you or break you, and you're going to know they're in the vein of your life. Because you may not even want to receive it after, after God allowed them to say what they have to say. Amen. So I want us to first look at um, Abraham. And woman of God, it was so funny because from the night when we talked, I know we talked in Genesis 12, but as I begin to study and read some more, um, I found in Genesis chapter 20 how where um God allowed Abraham to try to deceive Amalek. And so, um, let me switch my Bibles up. This, this thing got so good to me, I said, oh God. <laughs> my God is on So here in Genesis chapter 20, Abraham, he moves and he goes to um, towards the south. God allows him to move and go towards the south. And while in between Kaddish and Shur, and then he moves on to Gera, while living there as a foreigner. Okay, now he's already out of his comfort zone. He's in a whole different territory. He don't know anybody. And so he tells his wife, this is what we're going to do. I want you to, don't tell them that you're my wife, but... I want you to say, you're my sister. So because he's a foreigner, he's in a place where he don't really know anybody, where he's not really any, um, really connected to anybody, um, he allowed fear to grip him. He allowed fear to grip him, fear and assumption to grip him. And so it says right here, Abraham, the second verse, Abraham introduces his wife, Sarah by saying, she is my sister. So King Amalek of Gear sent for Sarah and had her brought to him at his palace. Well, he sent for her to take her in marriage because Abraham lied and said, she's not my wife, this is my sister. So the king thinking on his end, you could deem him to be found innocent because he's only going by off of what Abraham told him. So he sends for her, he wants to take her in marriage, but watch how God opens up to him and reveals to him that this is a married woman, <laughs> glory to God. Right here in the third verse, it says, but the night, that night God came to Amalek in a dream and told him, you are a dead man, for that woman you have taken is already married. See, what he once was um, in the dark and unaware and unknown to know that Sarah was a married woman, God put him in a dream and allowed him to become aware and to be made known, she's married. You can't marry her, she's married. She's already taken. But watch this. And it says right here in uh, verse four, but Amalek had not slept with her yet. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? See, he's already beginning to plead with God. I'm innocent. I was unaware. I didn't know. So that's why you got to be ever so careful coming off of hearsay. We're going to get into it a little bit more because I pulled out some stuff with that. And so he says right here, he says, didn't Abraham tell me she is my sister? And she herself said, yes, he is my brother. See, now along with that, you got fear, assumption, and but then you got persuasion. Sarah was persuaded into agreeing with Abraham to go along with the lie. She was persuaded in to go in with the lie because you can imagine both of them being in a place where they don't, they don't really know anybody. This is not a common atmosphere, for, fear atmosphere for them. So they both, you can say that they both were fearful. 
steal from him. And it says right here, he says, I acted in complete innocence. My hands are clean. Because see, the king already knew the seriousness of God. If he took upon to sleep with Sarah, knowing that she was already connected to a man in marriage. It says, verse six right here, it says, in the dream, God responded, yes, I know you are innocent. That's why I kept you from sinning against me. That alone in itself allowed me to know God will keep you when you're unaware from someone that is operating and doing something, something off of a lie. A lie can be so dangerous until you can cause innocent blood to get messed up and even very, very well near to death. And it says right here, it says, he says, and why I did not let you touch her. Now return the woman to her husband and he will pray for you for he is a prophet. Keynote, he was a prophet. This goes to show us right here as prophets, number one, Abraham had an issue. What was his issue? He had fear and he had assumption that caused him to tell a lie. We have to deal with our fears because this clearly shows us that if we don't deal with our fears, it will cause us to go into realms that are not pleasing unto God and we will develop a life of lying or a spirit of lying. That's what happened to Abraham. He was a prophet called and chosen. Now, in, in this same um, book of Genesis, if you read it in 12, he was Abram. But verse um, chapter 20 is a conversion of him and Sarah being um, coming from Abram and yeah. Sarah to Abraham yeah. and Sarah. Mm -hmm. So there was a conversion of the name change. And so at the same time, still, though, it's pointed out for you to see how the fear gripped them and caused them to lie. When you are connected and you are locked in God, you don't have to lie. All you have to do is trust him and know that if he's taking you to a place He's going he's gonna to provide for you. He's going to keep you. And he's going to do everything that you need by all means possible so that you can have what you need to have. Now watch this. Because it was pointed out to the king that this was a prophet. He wasn't a false prophet. He was just a prophet that told a lie. Glory to God. It says right here. It says, then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all of your people will die. See, so the king had to be obedient to God and return Abraham, his wife, back to him. He gave him an ultimatum, um, an ultimatum and a choice to let him know, okay, listen, you gotta get her back to her husband. I know he lied to you, but that's why I kept you from touching her and from getting into a place where you would mess up and sin against me. I'm going to need you to return her back so that nothing will affect you because I know you're innocent blood. Think about this. That's why it's so important for you to have discernment when you come into a prophetic uh, arena, because you will get an arena where there's a mixture where you have false prophets and you have the prophets of the Lord. And you gotta know the difference. How will you know the difference? It's through your discernment. That's why you gotta have Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit is gonna make it known to you 
When someone approaches you and they try to give you the word of the Lord, you will be able to discern and know if they are accurate. You will be able to know if they're hitting the, uh, uh, the nail on the head. Because why? Your spirit is going to bear witness to what they're saying. Now watch this. It says right here. It says right here. It says, but if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that all of your people will die. Verse 8, Amalek got up early the next morning and quickly called his servants together. Then he told them what had happened. His men were terrified. Then Amalek called for Abraham. What have I done to, he said, what have you done to us? He demanded, what crime have I committed that deserved treatment like this? making me and my kingdom guilty of this great sin. No one should ever do what you have done. Whatever possessed you to do such a thing. Abraham replied, watch this. This is how you know it was an act of fear. This is what he said. He said, I thought this is a godless place. There you see the, uh, the fear and the assumption of him saying, well, I thought this was a godless place. He allowed his mind to think that the king didn't have a relationship with God or didn't know God in some sort or in some manner that he feel that he had to tell a lie. So watch this. He says, um, this kind of thing. They, they, will, they will want my wife and will kill me to get her. And she, now watch this. This would trip me out. Because in this, in this verse of it here, it says right here, and she really is my sister. For we both have the same father, but different mothers. And I married her. Now we all know in biblical times, they had, that kind of stuff going on. But nevertheless, he told him, he said, well, she is my sister, but we have different mothers, but we are of the same father. So it was really pointless for you to tell a lie. All he had to do was go and trust in God. And another thing you can point out from this too, he was unfamiliar with the territory. Unfamiliar with the territory. So he thought he was stepping into a place that didn't know of his God. And so that's what allowed him, fear and assumption allowed him to tell the lie. Right here, verse 13, it says, when God called me to leave my father's home and to travel from place to place, I told her, do me a favor. Then he called it a favor. He called the lie a favor. <laughs> he said, do me a favor. Wherever we go, tell the people that I'm your brother. Wow. I said, oh my God, Abraham was really terrified because Sarah was known to be a beautiful woman. And so now, now when I read this, I looked at it, I said, okay, well, you know, he told a lie because his wife was of such beauty. So he felt that the only way that he could protect her was to say, she's not my wife, she's my sister. But see, he didn't know the operation of God concerning the king because God put the king in a dream and that's how, re how he revealed it to him to let him know. This ain't this man's sister. This is man's whole wife. And so that what she thought was protecting, he really was bringing danger to himself if God didn't step in and help him and correct that thing by letting the king know, no, that's not his sister, that's his wife. Watch this. And so it says right here, it says, um, Abram, it says, 
Okay. Then Amalek took some of his sheep and goats, cattle, and male and female servants, and he presented them to Abraham. He also returned his wife, Sarah, to him. Then Amalek said, look over my land and choose any place where you would like to live. And he said to Sarah, look, and look, I am giving your brother 1,000 pieces of silver in the presence of all these witnesses. This is to compensate you for any wrong I may have done to you. This will settle any claim against me and your reputation is clear. Then Abram prayed to God and God healed Amalek and his wife and his female servants so they could have children. Verse 18, for the Lord had called all the women to be, to be infertile because of what had happened to Abraham's wife. See, the lie brought so much damage on the other women not being able to even bear children until Amalek released Abraham back his wife. Now watch this. Out of the whole thing, God still allowed Abraham and Sarah to be blessed. The very man that Abraham lied to, God allowed him to bless him with sheep and cattle and, and gave him a thousand pieces of silver. And then in turn, glory be to God, allow Abraham to turn around and pray for the king so that he could be blessed and receive that which was due unto him, his wife and his other servants. But now watch this. I believe though Abraham had to go into a place of repentance and ask God to forgive him for telling the lie and getting things all knocked off and off course and out of alignment. So in my notes, I want you to understand and know that, you know, first of all, you have to be able to discern and know when someone is amongst you and they are prophet lying. And you have to allow the Holy Spirit that's within you. He's our helper. He's our guider. He's going to help you and make it known to you when you are among someone that will try to mislead you. Now, just because the just because Abraham told a lie, God didn't beat him down into the ground. God gave him the opportunity to go and repent and get it right. And when he repented and got it right, then he was able to move into doing what God commissioned and told him to do for the king. So you got to understand the importance of repentance because we going to do stuff, but we can't intentionally do stuff. Because see, that was an intentional move from Abraham. Why? Because he didn't want to lose his wife. And he did. Not only that, glory to God, he didn't want to lose his wife and he didn't want to lose his life. See, it's a twofold. He didn't want to lose his wife, but he also didn't want to lose his very own life. So he told the lie in a way to be um, for protection. But when you know that God got you, and you're in God, you don't have to do that. You got to trust God. That's why the Bible says we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Sometimes we may not even understand. Okay, God, why are you pulling me from this direction and telling me to go to this direction? You know, I don't know nobody here. That's how I felt when I moved to Atlanta. I didn't know a soul. And I was like, oh, God, you telling me to go to that what? You telling me to go what? and leave all my family behind. But I had to be obedient and I had to trust God and I had to do what he told me to do. Okay, now 
we gonna look at the false prophet. My God, as I was studying this thing, so to answer the question, was Abraham a false? He wasn't a false prophet. He was just a prophet that lied because of fear. Fear came upon him. Assumption in his mind came upon him and he persuaded his wife to come into agreement with him to tell the lie. So he wasn't a false prophet. He just was a prophet that had the issue of lying. And he had to have that spirit dealt with so that that wouldn't happen again. And that's what we have to do as prophets of this day and time in this age. You know, if there's some things that we're not quite sure of, or, you know, God is moving us in a thing, or he's putting a charge for us to, and then too, you have to ask yourself, are you ready for that? Are you ready for that charge or that call that God is, is, is placing you in, um, that God is positioning you in? Because see, sometimes we can hear the title and we get hype off the title, but then we don't understand the work behind it. I ran from being called as a prophet for years. Oh, glory to God. I would tell people, I'm not a prophet, I'm a messenger. I just say what he tell me to say. Don't call me no problem. <laughs> Until I had that encounter and God confirmed to me, okay, no, daughter, I called you to be a prophet. I, I, I called you to be this person. I called you to be my mouthpiece and to speak what I would have you to speak, not what you Lisa wants to speak. So in other words, too, you have, have to dead in your flesh when it comes down to the things of God and when it comes to you speaking into the lives of the people of God or people period you have to dead in your flesh so that you don't give them um, what you want to give them or what you uh, or what you know they're itching to hear so now we're going to look at the false prophet in the book of Numbers. Oh my God. And I begin to look at this thing and study this thing and this thing begins to bless me because here we see the prophet Balaam. Prophet now, now watch this. He had the title prophet, but he was not deemed in the Bible as a prophet of God, but he was a prophet, okay? Now, in the book of Numbers, y'all bear with me. I got two Bibles out. Working with two Bibles. I said, oh, God. Now, in Numbers, chapter 22, here we see the prophet Balaam. And Balaam was one of those prophets. He was a, um, a dangerous prophet, false prophet. He kind of dibbled and dabbled into some stuff, mixed stuff together, you know. Um, but he was not called by God. He was called by Balak, who was a king. And when he realized that the children of Israel was coming into a place and, and coming into a territory that was deemed to them by God, he became fearful, but watch this, jealous. He became fearful and jealous. And it says right here in chapter 22, it says, and the children of Israel set forth towards and pitched in the plains of Moab. On this side, on this side, Jordan by Jericho. Verse two, and Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many. He saw a bunch of people and he became afraid, fearful. So now he want to go and do what he want to do. Watch this, it says. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are around about us as the ox licketh up 
the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beer, to Perah, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they have covered the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. In other words, they were in larger numbers than what he had. And they was coming to take his territory. They wasn't coming to take it because they wanted to. They was coming to take it because God gave it to them. That's what he allowed them to have. Watch this, it says, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I want that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. Balak wanted Balaam to curse the children of Israel. But Balaam had to let him know, I can't curse what God has already blessed. You want me to curse these people but these are blessed people. And I watched this. They wasn't blessed by anything that they said or did. They were blessed because they were simply the children of Israel. They were God's chosen people. And because they were God's chosen people, they were already adopted into the blessing. And Balaam let him, I can't curse these people. I'm going to jump down here to verse 12. It says, and God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Once again, I want to point out to you how, even though, because the Bible even tells you that Balaam, he was a perverse, uh, evil, wicked man. But watch this. He knew of God. He had some sort of connection and and. and um, some sort of knowledge to where he was not dumbfounded to the voice of God and he knew of God, he knew enough to go and pray and see the face of God when it came down to the children of Israel. And God had to keep telling Balaam, don't fall for uh, Balaam and curse these people because they're already blessed. These are my people. And they are a blessed people. They are a blessed nation. Listen, I'm going to go there. When you find people that's going to the soothsayers, that's going to the root doctor and the witch doctor and this doctor and that doctor, and they're trying to conjure up and put curses and, 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 um, and roots and spells and stuff on somebody that's a child of God, let me tell you something. That stuff is real, but, oh, it's a but in there. It does not dominate the power of God. Let me tell you something. Because I know who I am as a prophet of God and as a child of God, I have had cases where false prophets, prophets of the dark side, try and put witchcraft on me, try to speak against my life. And the Lord will show me and reveal to me what they were trying to do. But because I am a firm believer and I stand on the word of God, hallelujah, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. And I stand on his word and I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. It did not prosper. It did not even manifest. So when you find people saying, oh, yeah, well, oh, that stuff. Yeah, they have a power, but it's a power of darkness. But it will not work. It will not work. It will not come up against the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It will not come up against the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. So they can try it all they want to, but it will not work. Watch it. I'm going to skip around a little bit because there's so much 
And it blessed me because if you look at, and I want y'all to go back and study numbers, chapters 22, 23, and 24 in your personal time, because you will see where God used Balaam to such a great multitude to prophesy and tell Balak, you want me to curse these people, but I can't curse them. They are truly blessed of the Lord. And for each time, Balaam would tell Balak, build seven altars, go get some bulls and some rams. And for each altar, we're going to sacrifice them. But I'm going to go, Balaam said, but I'm going to go and I'm going to pray to the Lord and see what the Lord said concerning his people. See, he had enough wisdom to understand and know he couldn't be loose with his tongue to curse the people. Because that which was blessed could not be cursed. Glory be to God. Even here in, 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 in one of the prophecies, I want to share this right here. Right here in verse, um, this is 23, uh, uh, Numbers 23, right here at 19. It says right here, well, I'm going to go up and read 16. This is the second prophecy. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, go again unto Balak and say thus. Verse 17. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, what hath the Lord spoken? See, <laughs> Bala wasn't crazy. He knew that Balaam, again, had some connection with God to correspond and talk to God concerning his people. Because he told him, what has the Lord said this time around? Watch this. And this is what God told him, verse 18. And he took up his parable and said, rise up, Bala, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. He, he said, and it shall not do it. I'm sorry. That he should not repent. He said, and he shall not do it. Or have he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Verse 20, behold, I have received commandment to bless. He let them know. You want me to do your dirty work and curse them, but I can't curse them. In other words, let me, let me break it down in modern terms. You want me to go and do some root work and curse them, but I can't do that because they are blessed people. You want me to move into the spirit of divination, but I can't do that because they are a blessed nation. Watch this, he says, and he have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. When God bless you, I don't care how much somebody don't like you, because now remember now, um, Balak wasn't fond of these people. He was not fond of the children of Israel. Because number one, he already said, they was large in numbers. They were mightier, mightier than him. So in other words, he felt like they were stronger than him. They had much gain than what he did. And they were coming to wreak havoc and take over what he felt was his. So he didn't even like them. So he most definitely, he wanted the curse to fall upon them. And Balaam said, well, my God, I'm trying. And every time I try, blessings is manifesting. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Watch this. He says, they blessed. I can't reverse it. You want me to keep trying. But every time I keep trying, blessings on top of blessings, is happening. Verse 21. 
He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither have he seen perverseness in Israel. He didn't see anything unclean, unwrong with them. As far as I'm concerned, the children, they were in right standard with God. And so because they were in right standard with God, Balaam could not curse them. Every time he tried to speak out a curse, a blessing occurred. It says right here, it says, the Lord, his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. There's no wickedness. There's no twisted up, tossed up stuff going on with the children of Israel that will put them into a... In other words, there's no sin operating that would throw them into a curse to be brought upon them with God. So Balaam is letting him know, listen, you want me to do this, but I mean, in the eyesight of God, they're good. I can't curse them. Watch this. It says right here, it says, verse 23. Um, no, I'm ready. It says, according to this time, it shall be said of Jacob, and of Israel, what have God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. Now see, Balak done got frustrated, he done got angry, and yet somewhat confused because he don't understand how Balaam, the wicked prophet, the false prophet, couldn't do what he wanted him to do. Because see, to watch this now, nowhere it speaks of Balaam telling a lie. He didn't tell a lie. He told he, he told Balak the truth, and he told him, "Listen, you want me to curse them, and you want me to speak up against them, but I can't do that." And remember, earlier I gave the definition of, 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 of a false person or a false prophet. You don't necessarily have to put a lie out there to mislead nobody. Your wickedness alone in itself can be something that mislead a person if they're not paying attention to you. They can think that you operating and you moving accordingly and accurately to the things of God and you can be so off and wicked and, 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 and in so much turmoil. That's why you got to have, hallelujah, you got to have the gift of discernment. You got to have the spirit of discernment because it's in your discernment you will be able to pick up and know of these things. And you'll be able to, to stop it right there where it is. Glory be to God. Watch this. And so it says right here. It says, Balaam say unto him, now the, don't, don't do nothing to him. So now everything got to stand still because <laughs> Balaam is mad because he can't have his way. So now he said, you know what? Just don't do nothing to him. Don't do nothing to him. Don't curse him. Don't bless him. Don't do nothing. Watch this in verse 26. But Balaam answered and said unto him, Balaam told not I thee saying all that the Lord speaketh that I must do. In other words, he's saying, well, you don't want, then you told me to do what God said do, and I'm doing it now. You don't want me to do it because it's not turning out to go your way, it's not happening and manifesting to do what you want it to do. So now you don't want me to do nothing at all. Watch this. He says, verse 27. 
And Balak said, <clears throat> and Balak said unto Balaam, come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. See, and then two, listen, Balak kept, see, he thought it was in the place or the location of where he was taking Balaam, but that didn't even have anything to do with it. Once you are blessed by God, you are just simply blessed. It doesn't matter the location. Listen, I can move and go to Africa. And if that's what God wants to send me, and if that's the territory where he wants to plant me at, ain't no demon in hell. I don't care what root worker they got, what false prophet they got operating, he or she will not be able to uproot me and pluck me out of the hand of God and out of the place and location of where God has sent me. Because number one, I'm going there on an assignment. I'm not going in the comfort zone of my own self, but I'm going in to do a work for the kingdom. And so because I'm going to do a work in the kingdom of God, God has already set and prepared a place. Balak kept moving Beta from place to place to place, thinking that it was in the location. It was not in the location. He moved him to several different places. And he took him up high and showed him. Oh, glory to God. See, that's how the enemy will do with these false prophets. He'll show them and, and put them up. Hey, you can have all this. If you do such and so and so, you ain't got to tell a lie. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You ain't got to tell a lie. But all you got to do is be swayed and fall into the trick of the enemy. You can take your gift as a prophet and you can do this with it. And you will get this. Listen, when you are the mouthpiece of God, God has already said it and deemed you to be blessed. You don't have to use your gift to move into swearing and manipulation. See, then that's manipulation. That's what's attached to a false prophet. They got the spirit of manipulation and um, they, they, they start, you know, moving and doing things that totally puts them out of alignment when they're already out of alignment because first of all, it wasn't even called by God. Watch this though. Could it be that they very well have the prophetic, but it's twisted, it's tainted, it's not corrected because it can get corrected when they come into the faith of believing in the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And when they believe in the blood and allow conversion and conviction to take place and line their lives up with God. See, we all have a choice in the matter. Because the Bible tells us the gift, it comes without repentance. But you have a choice all on how you deem to use it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Watch this. So now it says right here. So I get to talk and y'all get excited. <laughs> Verse 27. And Ben, I say unto him, it's good. Come. Huh? Mm -hmm. It says right here, it says, Balak said, Come. He said unto Balaam, come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure, it will please God that thou mayest curse me, them from hence. See, he thought it was, well, surely God, if I move him to this, oh, glory to God. Don't you know a prophet, a true prophet of the Lord can go into a desolate place? And if God sent you to that desolate place, don't you get sidetracked and don't become fearful and weary because it's desolate. You're the prophet. You're the mouthpiece. You speak life. You speak by the power and the authority of God. You say what God says the Lord. And when you do that, you will be amazed at how the resurrected life will be erected into that place. You will be amazed of how that which was once desolate now is full of life. So Balak kept moving Balaam around. He kept moving him around. And it says right here, verse 28, and Balak brought Balaam unto the top of the pier 
that look it toward Jishamon. And Balaam said unto, unto Balaam, build here seven altars and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. Verse 30, and Balaam did as Balaam had said and offer a bullock and ram on every altar. That's a lot of work to put a curse. You mean to tell me I got to keep getting all these altars and getting all these bulls and rams and, and keep doing uh, just to put a curse? That's witchcraft. Do y'all hear it? Glory to God. That is witchcraft at its best. That's what you call a false prophet. That's witchcraft at its best just to put a curse on a nation of people that's already blessed. Hey, hey, glory to God. But he kept telling them, I can't do it. You moving me all around. Oh, glory to God. That's how some people do. Hallelujah. When they don't know our Lord and Savior. I feel the power of Holy Ghost, y'all. And they don't trust our God. But they trust in the things of this world. And they seek out to put a curse, to put a spell. They go to the soothsayer. They go to the psychic. They, stop. they even got this thing now where they, 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 um, they get crystal balls. They got these different crystals. This crystal for healing. This crystal for wealth. This crystal, um, this crystal to get your husband. I don't, if I can't open my mouth, glory to God and pray to God and let God, let me tell you something. Hallelujah. I ain't ashamed. Anybody on this Zoom that know me alive well, that know me know, I ain't afraid to tell it. I ain't ashamed to tell it. I know I am in God. I know what's on my children's life. But watch how the enemy will come in and he'll try to twist up there. Now, I got my, my, my 15 year old all his life grew up in the church. Out of all my children, oh, glory God. At the age of three, year, three years old, filled with the Holy Ghost. Whew. My God in Zion. His name is Zion, Emmanuel. The name alone in itself speaks for itself. But watch this here. A little over, I say, had to be about uh, uh, right about his 13th year life. See, that's why you got to be careful with your children tapping to. See, the enemy try to twist him and get him locked in to serve another God. He's 15 now. So I told him that's when he decided in his mind to fully come out. And make it known to me. <laughs> I don't want to serve your God. I said, whoa. See, the enemy is so treacherous till he will bring confusion in your camp. See, but you got to know the power and the authority that you walk in and that you possess. So now the enemy tries to put me in a warfare. My God. To have me and my 15 year old son going back and forth. And I had to tell him one time, I had to tell him this recently. I said, son, let me tell you something. <laughs> if that's what you choose, that's what you choose. But I know the God that I serve. I've been serving him over almost 20 something years now. I never prayed to an idol worship. I never bowed to another God. I never had to go and get, um, nowadays they're getting these money cans and money bottles. They even use the jewelry now, bracelets. I'm going to wear my bracelet because this bracelet go 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 help me um, get well. This bracelet going to keep me healed. No, your healing comes from God. That's who you pray to, to receive your healing. And I told him, I said, I didn't do it back then when I first got saved and you was a baby coming up to God. And I sure ain't finna do it now. I'm going to stand on what I know. That's why you have to constantly develop and purify your relationship with God. Because yes, there are false prophets. Yes, there are lying prophets. But that don't make them false. So you definitely got to know the difference because if they can pull you and sway you into a place, they'll do it and they'll have you all twisted up. And that's some things the Lord showed me concerning them. So I'm just prayerful. You got to be prayerful. 
Know your tools, hallelujah, hallelujah. As a prophet of God, know your tools and your weapons that you have to fight with when the kingdom of darkness rises up against you. What are your tools? Your first tool is the word of God. You got to get this word in you. Who, who was that he told Ezekiel? To eat of the stroll? You got to eat this thing and you got to get it down in you. Make time for God. I don't care if you got a bunch of stuff going on in your life. You got to make time for God. You got to study. You got to show yourself a proof. You got to dig into his word and get in his word. Because just as sure as you say God called you, especially if you say he called you as a prophet, now that's a five-fold ministry. The woman of God and I touched on a little bit when we talked. That's a five-fold ministry. You have the apostles, you have the prophets, you have the evangelists, you have the teacher, then you have the pastor. But out of the five-fold ministry, the one that is seen to be under great attack is the prophet. It's not the apostle. It's not the evangelist. And the evangelist has a, a dangerous call as well. But it's not on the attack like the prophet. You know why the prophet is sought to be on the attack? Because they are the ones that's deemed to be the mouthpiece of God. Yes, all of us at times can minister and, and, and speak, um, you know, um, uh, as, as, a, as a representative of Christ or as an ambassador of Christ. But when the prophet speak, he's getting a direct download from God. So his delivery ought to be pure. It ought, the clarity of it, it ought to be pure. It ought to be clean. It shouldn't sound flaky and weathering uh, back and forth. If you have experienced that, by all means, no, you better check that prophecy. If they're not prophesying according to the word of God that's in them, you better check it. Because according to the depths of the word, the word is your baseline when you prophesy. I tell people that all the time. And I was sharing with the woman of God, listen, as a prophet, a true prophet of the Lord, glory to God, I can't teach you to prophesy because we all prophesy in parts and by faith. But what I can teach you to do is to train your ear to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. Watch this. I'm going to back it up with scripture. So I'm telling you, you got to know the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah. Uh, um, I get excited, y'all. 50 and 4. Somebody, if you get it before me, get it in and, 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 and um, read it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prophet is Ashley, if you get it. Before I do, get it and read it. But I'm going to show you this is a clear, valid statement to let you know. Isaiah 50 and 4. I can't teach you to prophesy as a prophet, but I can't train your ear. Isaiah 50 and 4 says right here. It says, the Lord have given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakened me morning. He wakened me morning. He wakened my ear. Hallelujah. To hear as the learn. He wakened my ear to hear as the learn. Glory to God. Verse 5 says, The Lord has opened my ear. And I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. When you say the Lord called you as a prophet, your ear got to be open and awakened to his voice. And oh, glory to God. It's so much in me, y'all. Also, knowing the difference of whose voice you're hearing. You got to know the voice of the Lord. That's your very key, um, um, one of your important keys as a prophet or as one that has um, perfect, because there's prophetic utterance or just being in the prophetic arena. You have to be able to distinguish the 
difference in hearing the voice of God because you'll know the download. Hearing your own inner voice or thoughts, your own inner mind, you got to know the difference when it's God, when it's you, and watch this, when it's the enemy. Because the enemy speaks too. So there's three voices you got to be aware of. First, you got to hear the voice of God and know and discern. That's why your discernment, y'all gonna keep hearing me say that throughout the teaching. Your discernment is very important. Because then you will be able to distinguish and know the voice of God. But then when it's your inner thoughts, I never forget when I went through prophetic training, I'll never forget, my leader always told me, if God give it to you the first time, stick with what he give you the first time. Don't waver it. Don't go back and forth with it. Because then you'll confuse your own self. Well, see, you saw that with Balaam. You saw that with Balaam and Balaam. Balaam got so frustrated with Balaam because he couldn't do what he wanted him to do. So he just said, wait a minute, hold on. Let's not do nothing. Let's not even touch it. I don't even want to bother with it right now. Because <laughs> it's not working for me. And you will find people, though, that have connected themselves to a false prophet. They'll keep going back. And the next thing you and then see what that money is involved. They'll keep going back. And then they say, you know, they don't wipe out their bank account trying to put a curse on somebody. Like, really? You willing to go that far? You willing to drain your money out, sis? Because of the spirit of jealousy that's in you, that's causing you not to like me? So you want to put a curse on me? You want to root me? <laughs> well, sorry to bust your bubble, boo-boo. I'm already blessed. And because I'm blessed, I can't be cursed. The Bible says no weapon formed against me will prosper. So yeah, he letting you know, oh, there's people that's going to be out there that's going to try to do all kinds of stuff and try to do this and try to do that. But it ain't going to work. You tired and you connected into me. It ain't going to prosper. They can try it. But it ain't going to manifest. You my daughter. You my son. And because you belong to me and I have stamped my approval on you, hallelujah, they can't touch you. You know what I'm saying? I had a song back then, you can't touch this. <laughs> That's where you got to be at in such a place for God that you just got to know that. The enemy will try all kinds of things by all means necessary. And that, that lets you know right there alone in itself Oh my God, jealousy is real. But watch this. It's in the kingdom too, y'all. You have some people that have not yet got delivered. It's a daily thing for me to pray that I don't become jealous or envy and want what my sister or my brother have on their life. First of all, number one, I don't know the hell they went through. I don't know the suffering they encountered. Hallelujah. I don't know the pain in which they went through to answer what God has placed on their life. My God. So therefore, you cannot allow the enemy to come in and sway you. And to cause you to want something so bad, you mean to tell me you willing to go to a root doctor, a witch doctor, a soothsayer, a psychic, and try to conjure up a curse? The devil is a liar. No, if anything, I'm going to be that one to say, listen, you want to know how I came into what I came into? Let me introduce you to Christ. Let me introduce you to the God I know. The God I serve, the God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think. Let me introduce you to him. Because it's enough for him for everybody. <laughs> Glory to God. It's enough for him to go around and some. Glory to God. Watch this. It was so much that I got, Lord, on this topic. Now, this is the third prophecy. That was the second prophecy. This is the third prophecy 
that God released to Balaam. And it says right here, it says right here, I'm going to start at verse 3. It says, and he took up his parable and said, Balaam, son of Bera, have said, and the man who eyes are open have said, he said, he has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are, are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are, they spread forth as gardens by the riverside as the trees of laying aloes, which the Lord had planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his bucket, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Aga, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He have, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nation, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them, though with his arrows. He caught, he lay down as lion and as a great lion, who shall stir him up. Blessed is he that blessed thee, and cursed is he that cursed thee. He was letting Balaam know, listen, all that what you wanted me to do, then God even allowed Balaam eyes to be open and see. All this time, you kept moving me around, taking me to these different places. And that's 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 what people I call them, I call them the unlearned. And even if they do know better, because sometimes what you have to understand, do you know? There are people that are um, birthed into the religion of uh, Sangria. Um, you have people that are birthed into um, these type of cultures as religions. It's what I'm trying to think of. It's in my head. I can't call it right now. Um, Oh God, what is that one where they use um witchcraft? It's a heavy, it's a common witchcraft. Voodoo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, when the Lord called me as a prophet, true prophet of the Lord, these were things that I had to know of. Because you have to know what's out there. I didn't study them and didn't practice them, but I made myself aware. So I would know when I come across a false prophet, because watch this. Do you know a false prophet recognizes and know who you are when you come across their path? They can tell and know when you are the real deal. Because they recognize the spirit of God that's in you. And they're able to recognize and know, oh, she real. See, and they hide themselves. I've been in the presence and in the midst of when I came across false prophets. They'll recognize who I am immediately, but then they'll shut away. See, they can't give you out of eye contact. But then watch this, you do have some that are bold enough to give you out of eye contact. But nevertheless, you still have to know who you are and that you are a true prophet called of God. You can't let it fear you. You can't allow it to cause you to buck and crumble and turn away and shut away and put our God down and pick up their God of an idol. See, false prophets, they do a lot of, um, thank you, Holy Ghost. False prophets tend to operate out of a lot of idol worship. They do a lot of idol worship. They pray to a lot of image gods and they create you know, the uh, the image gods. Nowadays, you, you have uh, what you call the new age Christians. And they put Christian on it. 
Oh, yeah, let me upgrade y'all. For those of y'all that don't know, they'll tag Christian on it. They're witches. They call themselves Christian witches. <laughs> and then they'll say, oh, well, God already know. She'll get arrogant and cocky with you because they do that to treat you and make you feel like you don't know what you know. And then they'll try to confuse your mind and make you, you know, start um, being double-minded and start thinking, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute, what did I miss? It's a, it's a lady, she said, um, call herself a Christian witch. And then she said, and anyway, she'll get proper on you. And anyway, God created me, so he already know that I was gonna be a witch. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? Well, did you forget the memo that he said, I am a jealous God and there should be no other God before me? That's including the idol worship. We even have now, and I'm sharing this with you all. It's so much in my heart to share. I got one more thing I want to point out. We got to be ever so careful. You even got it to where now they give praise and worship to the universe. Oh, I thank the universe for my business. Oh, I thank the universe. He allowed me to become successful. But wait a minute here. What about the God that created the universe? What about the triumphant God? that made the heavens and the earth. How in the world, oh glory to God, you can take him out of the equation and give praise and thanks to what he created? My God in Zion, that got to be the most backwardest move I've ever seen operating now. But I want to tell you, people of God is operating so heavy right now. They will give praise and I thank the universe for keeping my bit. I thank the universe for making me healthy. No, you got to thank the creator of the universe. Because he's the one that gives you the ability to do what you're able to do. When I worked in the hospital, the Lord opened my eyes to something. He opened my eyes to start praying that we get more saved Christian doctors in position and in place. Because whether the doctor acknowledge it or not, it is the God that created them to have the infinite wisdom, his infinite wisdom in their little minds to do what they do. See, once time they was just giving the praise and the adoration to the scientific matter but now throughout the course of time and studying theologians and even people that um go into these deep studies they're realizing that it's just not the scientific matter but it is the god that created the earth that created the scientists and all of the other scientific operations that give them the ability to do what they do, to study and find out what they find out. The surge, the see, thank you, Holy Spirit. The surge, the power surge, it, 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 it gotta be connected to God. Cause if it's not connected to God, it's, on, it's only gonna work and last but for so long. It's just like with our cell phones and we don't, you plug your cell phone up, you get a full charge, you are 100%. At some point in time of the day, if you don't check your bar and look and see that you got half of a percentage, 50%, and you don't plug in, at some point in time, you go, your, your phone gonna die. That's just like with us. God is our power source. And if we do not plug into him, how do you plug into him? By reading your word, praying, fasting, all of that helps you build your relationship and it keeps you sharp and on your to toes. Then he'll connect you to others in the body of Christ 
that will help sharpen you and get you in a place to where at some point you're able to stand on your own. So you will know, and oh, I love it how, um, I want to say it's in the book of, um, what was that? Ezekiel 13, how it also talks about the false prophets coming um, like wolves in sheep clothes. So in other words, a false prophet, they'll come and they'll portray themselves to be just like you, look like you, sound like you, talk like you. But what you gotta have is a spirit of discernment to know they're not like you. They're not like you. And how will you know that? By allowing your ear to be open. By allowing your ear to be open and the spirit of discernment operating in you. That's how you're going to know. Oh my God. Y'all got to go back and read numbers. And y'all got, I'm telling y'all, y'all got to really get into this thing. How Balak went and looked for Balaam. So listen, if a person can go and look and search you out, he had to have some sort of information on Balaam to know what he was about. To even know what he was capable of. The Bible doesn't go into details of him putting curses and doing curses on um, people. But in this case, in this significance, it tells it. Because Balak searched out Balaam to operate and perform a curse. But he could not do it because he said, these are already some best people. I can't curse them. Every time I try, blessings keep manifesting. So in a nutshell, he was letting Balak know, listen, man, you might as well go and give it up. <laughs> Leave your people alone. If anything, you better try to get to know the God that they're serving and get on the good side with them. Glory to God. Now, the next is going to be the last prophet that we look at. And he indeed, glory to God, was a true prophet of the Lord. He was, he was a true prophet of the Lord um, in 1 Kings. I'm going to open it up in both Bibles. But one is a living, a new living translation. And one is, I want to say this is the King James. So I'm going to look. Look at it in both uh, Bibles. And here we see in 1 Kings 22 how Micaiah was a true prophet of the Lord, but also fell into persuasion. See, you got to, Paul said you cannot be easily persuaded to come up off of the things of God. You got to be fully persuaded to stand firm and say, I know what I know what I know, and I'm not coming up off it. If God said it, then I'm running with it. I'm not going to allow anyone to come in and get me off track and get me off course of what God has promised or what God has spoken and said of my life. And let me tell you why people do it. I hear this real strong in the Holy Ghost, too. People, false prophets come along to try to twist you and trip you up and get you off of track with God because they want to try to destroy the anointing that's on your life. They come because they be after the anointing that's on your life. Because the Bible says that it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. So here, even before we move into the next prophet, even here, you see where how God used somebody that was wicked. Bob said he was a perverse man. He was wicked, cricket, perverse. But yet God still used him to speak forth a blessing upon his people. So don't, it doesn't matter the location or uh, even who the person is. If God deems to use you, 
He will use you. Watch this, there's a difference now. God didn't chose Balaam, but he used Balaam. How did he use Balaam? He used Balaam to speak for blessings upon his people. The Bible didn't speak of him being one called or, or chosen by God. Oh, but God did use him. God did use him. And so because God used him, he had to do what God said do. Even at the bait, I said, well, let's just leave it alone. He said, it's a little, in other words, you said, no, it's a little bit too late for that. It's a little bit too late. I got to obey God. Even though he was a crooked man, it goes down to him choosing to still obey God. And that's what he did. Watch this now. We're going to look at, um, I highlighted it. Well, I'll, I'll read it from this one here. Now we're going to look at the story of Jehoshaphat and Ahab and uh, the prophet Micaiah, chosen by God. Might be saying that name wrong, y'all. But we're going to look at this and we're going to see how this particular prophet was swayed <laughs> into saying or prophesying something that didn't line up. But then watch how God dealt with him and he fixed it. He corrected it. That's the important key I want you to see. Because he was a true prophet and Jehoshaphat knew, oh, glory to God, that he was a true prophet, definitely called by God. And he had to correct that when he knew. It says right here, I'm going to read um, 1 Kings, and I'm going to start chapter 22, verse 1. It says, it's about Jehoshaphat and Ahab. For three years, there, were no, there was no war between Aram and Israel. Then during the third year, King Jehoshaphat of Judah went to visit King Ahab of Israel. During the visit, the king of Israel said to his officials, do you realize that the town of Ramoth Gilgad belongs to us? And yet we have done nothing to recapture it from the king of Ram. Okay, so pretty much they got this land. They know it belongs to them. But, you know, okay, somebody else got it, but they haven't really made a big issue about it. But now they want their land. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> they want their land. Okay, now watch this. It says right here, verse 4, it says, Then he turned to Jehoshaphat and asked, Will you join me in battle to recover Ramah Gilgad? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, why, sure, of course, you and I are as one. Now, see how he done took and connected himself to him and let him know? Sure, I got you, my brother. Me and you, we won. Yeah, I'll help you out. We'll do this. So it says right here, my troops are your troops. And my horses are your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, watch this now, but first, let's find out what the Lord is saying. See, he gave him an answer. He gave Ahab an answer. But then he said, well, hold on, wait a minute, buddy, now, before we just run up in there. Let's make sure the coast is clear. Let's see what God is saying. See, all throughout all three opponents, I was able to pull out and show you that God was all up in it. They never did nothing without saying, let me go seek God. Let me go consult God. Now you hear Jehoshaphat say, hold up. Let's go see what God is saying. Because I don't want to just move upon my flesh according to seeing that's what false prophets do too. They move according to their flesh. They don't move according to the mind of God. They move in operation of their own mind. 
They don't move according to the mind of God and what God is saying, but they move according to their own mind and according to their flesh. That's how they operate and they move off of. Okay? So right here you see it says in verse um verse four, he turns and he asks over, okay, is it Joseph that replied to the king of Israel? Well, of course, you are um you and I are one. My truth is your truth, my horse is your horses. Then Jehoshaphat added, but first, let's see, let's find out what God is saying. Let's find out what the Lord is saying. He let him know, we got to go hear what God is saying. Okay? Verse 6. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets. Okay? Prophets with an S. So it's more than one. About 400 of them. And asked them, should I go to war against Ramoth Gilgal? Or should I hold back? In other words, George Beck was saying, you ain't finna send me up in all kind of ways. I got to make sure the coast is clear and I'm able to go in and do whatever we need to do to get our land back. But I ain't going in there to lose my life now. Watch this. It says right here, it says, they all replied, yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. Verse 7 but Jehoshaphat asked, is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? See, they were prophets, but they wasn't deemed to be prophets of God. So Je Jehoshaphat is like, wait a minute, let me get somebody that I know for sure, for sure, that they are God and that they have a relationship with God. That's how you will know too, whether or not if they're a true prophet. The, the relationship that they have with God is going to be revealed to you and it's going to stick out. No matter how much, even if they prophesy to you in a way where they don't make mention of God, you being the one that have the gift of discernment will be able to discern and know, okay, this person for real, for real. There's instances where I have I prophesied because God will make you aware and he'll let you know they may not be of one that serves your God. How are you going to deliver the word to them, though? How are you going to convince them and persuade them? That's a good persuasion to know that the Lord your God is real. What is going to be a key factor to them that open their ears up to say, hmm, you're right. I never forget I went into a hair store get some hair for somebody, doing somebody hair. And the Lord allowed me, I was standing next to the lady and um, I picked up that the lady is a wealthy lady, but I also picked up that the lady has been through some hell and um, that the Lord wants to heal her. And the Lord said, tell her, I want to heal her. And so I said, okay, Lord. I said, well, give me the words to say, because I picked up too. I could have tell is just with something about her I could tell that the spirit of darkness was resting on her and I knew she was not a believer and the Lord through my discernment allowed me to hit it right on head I asked her sometimes you just have to ask I asked her I said hello how are you I told her my name and I said um I said, can I ask you a question? I said, I have a word for you. I said, but I want to ask you, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And she said, no, no. She was a Jamaican. No, no, don't believe in God. Don't believe in God. Don't believe in Jesus. Jesus, she went into saying it was for the white man and all. I said, oh, okay. Well, I said, anyway, I got to be obedient and tell you what thus says the Lord. I said, well, the Lord allowed me to know that you are very wealth, wealthy very prosperous woman there's a your hands your hands are very very gifted and that god you know he wants to bless you he wants to bless your hands even the more i said but i also see you got a lot of hurt and you got a lot of pain that you're dealing with See, do this for me when you go home i said for every person that hurts hurt you write their name down and release them from you i said open your windows up and release 
the bad spirits, the bad, whatever you got going on, get it out of your atmosphere. Do you know that woman started to cry? She stepped back from me. She said, oh, you are real. I don't know what God you serve, but you are real. You don't know me from a can of paint, but you look into my life. See, you have to even understand, woman of God, God leads you on it. We even got to do a, a teaching on the lingo of the prophetic because there's a different lingo that we speak that's not of the same kind of the false prophet. See, they'll come with you with, oh, that was deja vu. And, oh, it seemed like I was here before. When they don't know that, it's the spirit of the Lord. Allow them to go and travel into Af Africa. I'm not talking about astral projection because that's witchcraft too. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about but when the Lord literally puts you in a dream and he takes you to a place or to a city or he gives you a name of a place or a city and he lets you know by this time tomorrow when you get there, this is who I'm going to have set up for you to meet. This is who's going to await you. God will be just that detail with you when you are connected to him in the true vine and in the right way. He'll, he'll, he'll be just that detail to let you know by this time tomorrow, you're going to meet somebody with a green shirt and they're going to have short black hair and they're going to be the one that bless you because I've already spoken your name to them. And when they meet you, they're going to know right off, off the bat, your name is Ashley. And they're going to know the release what I've already spoken to them to release to you. Glory be to God. God will do it just like that. He will be detailed just like that. See, one thing about a true prophet, you got to stay pure. You got to. You got to stay before the Lord. You have to uh, pray. You have to fast. And you have to live holy. Every day. I'm not talking about what, because see, we, that, and that's a double-mindedness right there. Because yes, we already know the Bible says that you're going to sin and man fall short to the glory of God. But I'm talking about doing your best not to habitually sin, not to purposely sin, not to willfully sin. I'm talking about the kind of lifestyle where you know that the Bible has already told you, God has already told you to come from among them and be ye separated. Why you got to come from among them and be ye separated? Because God got to work on you. He got to purge you. He got to purify you. He got to get you ready. He got to shape you and mold you. So watch this when he send you back. They'll be able to identify and know that the presence of the Lord rests upon you and that, oh, yeah, no, she done been before the Lord. Oh, no, I can't do all kind of stuff. I can't say, and see, for one, one time I used to say, well, no, why they always say, oh, my bad, or oh, um, I'm sorry. It's not that they're reverencing you, but they're reverencing the God in you. They're giving reverence and respect to the God in you. That's why when you come into the atmosphere and you see people doing all kinds of stuff and they might, you know, take a drink and say, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I ain't even knew you was coming right there. It's not that they putting you up on a pedestal. No. <laughs> They're reverencing the God in you. For somebody that smokes cigarettes, they might say, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. I ain't even mean to like this in front of you. It ain't even got nothing to do with you. It's the God in you that they see and they respect and they reverence. That's just like little kids out here in my neighborhood. When they see me coming through, they might be laughing and playing stuff, but then when they see me coming through, they say, oh, hey man, how you doing? I got one little boy, me and him kind of started off on the wrong foot, but then I pulled him over one day. God said, you got the love of Christ in you. And by my word, my word says, by loving kindness, have I drawn thee? You got a chance and an opportunity to draw him or either cause him to pull back. It's up to you. What you going to do? So you know what I did? I stopped him one day. I said, come in, young man. 
He had a BB gun and he was chasing the little child with the BB gun. And I said, my God, this young man don't even know. He can mess himself up. So the Lord had me to talk to him because guess what the Lord did? He took me back to when I was a child and I used to be ruthless and I used to be wow. People look at me now and they see me now and they're like, what? I ain't know you start you being a wild person, but I used to be. In my teen years, I was buck wild and ready to fight in a minute. <laughs> but I thank God for deliverance. And that's what the Lord, he took me back to that. And I began to talk to that young man and minister to that young man. And do you know, ever since that day now, every time when he see me, he give me power. Y'all know that's what the young people do. He give me power. And that's what the Lord told me. He said, you are a light. How you let your light shine, it determines how you want to win and draw souls. So you want to make sure you have a clear understanding. It's not about you, by all means. And that, that goes to whether if you are a prophet, preacher, minister, whatever. It's not about you, but it's about God and his kingdom and winning his people. Glory to God. And so here we see, let me get back to the scripture, y'all. I'm almost done, y'all. I know we got to open up the arm. Um, now, so here we see how God allows Jehoshaphat to ask and say, okay, is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? He making it known. Okay, I know you got prophets, but I don't know if they are of the Lord. <laughs> so do we not have a prophet here of the Lord? Oh, glory be to God. It says right here, we should ask him the same question. Now, this stuck out to me because, see, the question didn't change. It was the very same question that they had already asked the 400 prophets, but Jehoshaphat was like, now nah, I need a little bit more clarity because how is it all 400 prophets saying, yeah, go ahead. See, to me, I feel like Jehoshaphat felt like they was kind of shunning them off. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna get the victory. Go ahead. But Jehoshaphat wanted the assurance and the assurity to know that do we have a prophet of the Lord here? It says right here in verse, um, what is that? Verse 8. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, there is one more man who could consult the word, who can consult the Lord for us. Watch this. Got to be careful. When people see the anointing and the call of God on your life, especially when you operate in the prophetic, they get jealous. It's like they, 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 I don't know. They thrive and they feed and they thirst. It's like a thirstiness come on them and a hungerness come on them the prophetic but you gotta want it the right way you gotta want it god's way not your way watch what he's saying oh glory to god this thing i said my god it made me to be even more vigilant and even more careful now when i open my mouth and say i'm a prophet of god watch this he says but i hate him that is a dangerous territory. That is a dangerous place to be. Um, so all the while, you know you know somebody that can give you a true valid point, give you true clarity in the question you asking. But then you hold it back. Now, see, that will make me look at Ahab differently. Because I'm me and you supposed to be down like two flat tires. And we supposed to be in that place where I'm saying my truth is your truth. Oh, glory to God. My horses is your horses. I'm adhering myself to whatever you need. I'm letting you know I'm down with you like four flat tires, but then because I want assurance and I want security, 
to know that it's all right for, for us to go in this territory and to go in this place. Then you come out and you tell me, well, yeah, I know somebody, but I hate them. My God in Zion, that word hate alone is a dangerous word. It's powerful, but yet dangerous. And so you have to be careful. You have to be ever so careful who you connect yourself to as prophets of God, as true prophets of the Lord, because he will show you another prophet's spirit. And he will show you. That's why your discernment is so important. Because he will show you if they're really for you or if they're just after to get what you have. Or if they're just after to obtain what's on your life. My God in Zion. He said, I hate him. That thing made me cringe when I read that. I said, Jesus Christ. Watch this. Now let me tell you why he hate him. <laughs> For the prophets that's on the line, let me help you out. The true prophets, let me help you. When you go and you say, thus says the Lord, and you are real, and you are genuine with it, you're not sugarcoating it, but you saying what thus says the Lord. See, I'm the type of prophet, I can't sugarcoat it, because I can't go home and get whipped for not saying what thus says the Lord, because he will whip you. Prophet is actually, you can confirm to that. He will whip you. When you don't tell the truth, and you don't say what he told you to say, how he told you to say it, he will deal with you later on it. He didn't, he didn't like this prophet, Micaiah. He didn't like Micaiah. Ahab didn't like Micaiah because he said, this prophet never tells me anything good. He never prophesies nothing good to me. All he ever prophesies to me is trouble. Hey, shaka tabasahaya. He called all over Hoshaya. Hey, God, thank you. You can even find in Jeremiah how the king didn't like him. Why? Because he was a judging prophet. It's safe to say that Micaiah was one that when he said, well, thus said the Lord, and he know that he know that he know it's from God, there was a judgment behind it. And when you are that that type of prophet, you cannot stay in the atmosphere and the perimeters of where there's evil work being done because they'll turn on you and they'll come after you to kill you. So you got to say what God has you to say and you got to make way and get out of there. Ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I feel you, God. Thank you, God. I hope this is helping somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I hate him. He never prophesies anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imla, my God in Zion. Jehoshaphat replied, watch this. See, Je let me tell you something. If you hooked up to somebody and they say they're your friend, and they let you live all kind of ways and you're supposed to be a representation of God. Shame on you for wanting to stay connected to them, but shame on them for even wanting to stay connected to you. Watch this. He corrected him. Jehoshaphat was bold. Just letting me know. Jehoshaphat was a bold man of God. He corrected him and he let him know. He said, wait a minute here now. Jehoshaphat replied, that's not the way a king. Then you was in authority? And you carrying on like this here? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. I might have to check our friendship. I might have to do a road check and see if I'm even supposed to be connected to you. Because you in authority, you in rulership, and you speaking of this manner to say you don't like him, you hate him. He didn't even say like, that's too gentle. Let me correct myself. That life is too, I hate him. Hate is a strong word. And that's something that, you know, you've always been taught. I know growing up as a child, my grandma always, don't you say you hate somebody or you hate something. That's a strong word. That's like, that's almost like murder. That's like you murdering somebody. And that's something I always teach my children. Don't use that around me. Hate is a very strong word. Don't use that. 
And it says right here, Jehovah that said to him, he corrected him and he let him know. That's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. See, Jehoshaphat was, was, was one of those ones. You ain't going to just throw me anything and expect me to run with it. Yeah, I know you got your prophets, but I need a real true prophet of God. That's going to speak and say what thus says the Lord. It says right here, it says um, in verse, what was that? Verse 9. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, quick, bring Micaiah, son of Imla. Okay, here now, verse 10. King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying. <laughs> there in front, there in front of them, one of them, Ze Zechariah, son of Keniah, made some iron horns and proclaimed, this is what the Lord says. With these horns, you will gore the Amorans to death. All all the other prophets agree. Yes, they say, go up to Ramoth, Gilgad, and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. So now he done went and he done made a weapon, done created a weapon, and I told him, okay, this is what the Lord said, this is what's going to happen and what take place. Y'all going to do this. Go and kill them, in other words, and y'all will come out with the victory. They made it sound so simple and so easy. One, two, three, this is going to happen, and y'all going to get y'all land back. But watch this. Verse 13. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree. Oh, my God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's back up. See, somebody got in. Micaiah's ear. See, this is what all of these prophets are saying. So we're going to need you to come into agreement. And you say the same thing. See, you can't get up there and go, go say, um, oh, no. Well, that's not what I'm hearing God say. I'm hearing God say otherwise. You have to be ever so quick, careful and not allow anyone to get in your ear gate. And that's what we go when we get ready for it, when we close out, we're gonna pray and we're gonna cover our ear gates, we're gonna cover our eyes, and we're gonna cover our mouth. Because whether if you know whether or not if you are a prophet called to say what God has you to say, God uses you at some point in area of your life to speak and say what He has you to say. So th these are areas that have to be covered. That's why you got to be careful what you see as a prophet. Woman of God and I touched on that too. You got to be careful what you see as a prophet. Because when I started out as a prophet, I didn't start out seeing. I started out hearing. That's how Isaiah 50 and 4 became one of my favorite scriptures because I would always hear the voice of God, but I would be looking for him. And the Lord had to tell me, you hearing me because I am within. I am in you. And you're hearing the audible voice of me because I'm in you and I'm downloading to you. It wasn't until later on down the years I experienced it seeing in the realm of the spirit. God would, um, I'm sorry, y'all. God would allow me to start seeing. Um, I started actually, I can pinpoint it to you. I started seeing in the realm of the spirit 2012. Received in the second call 2009, where the prophetic always been on my life, it was just dormant. I wasn't fully open to it until I accepted the call. And then once I accepted the call and answered to it, I went from hearing the voice of God, but being able to see in the realm of the spirit. And it's powerful how God can show you things because God will show me things either through open or closed vision. 
Or when I'm in the prophetic realm, I'm prophesying. God will start letting me see in the realm of the spirit. So when I prophesy to someone I, and I see the Lord doing this and I even see you in your room, I'm telling you what I see. And that person that I'm prophesying to, they'll know whether or not if it's an act of prophecy because I've never been in their house before. Never stepped foot to know how they got their room set up. But they know. And that's what's going to give them clarity and reverence to know Okay, this is definitely God. Because this woman of God don't know nothing about me. She's definitely connected to, to the true vine of God, and she's definitely hearing, and she's real. They'll know that. So it says right here. It says right here, this is what the Lord says with these. <clears throat> he told them how they was going to go, made these horns, do whatever, get the victory. Verse 13 is where I was at. It says, meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah, said to him, look, all these prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure you agree with them and promise success. See, when you got somebody that's sneaky, you got to watch out for them little sneaky ones because they'll come. Well, just be sure, you know, um, you do it this way so they won't be able to tell that you different. That's basically what he was letting them know. Be sure you come into agreement to say that they're going to get a great victory so they won't be able to pinpoint out that you're a different prophet. You're a different type of prophet. Oh, glory to God. It says right here, verse 14, but Micaiah replied, as surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what the Lord tells me to say. True prophets of God, you must stand firm on what God tell you to say and what God say, say only. You cannot let no one get in your ear. I don't care if they promise you a million dollars. You cannot sell yourself out for riches or for fame. The word of God says, what shall it profit a man to gain of the whole world and lose of his soul? Don't alter your destiny for riches. Don't alter your destiny for a promise somebody. Well, he said he was going to do this. If I do this, then when it get down to the nitty gritty, you look and see, he done promised five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more people the same thing he promised you. Don't sell yourself out. Watch this. He said, I'm going to only say what God tell me to say. And, I, and this is real, y'all. That's another form of witchcraft. And you have people that want to try to come and alter your words and twist your words. I done literally had people that try to get me to um, pull on me. Well, say what the Lord say. What did God say? How did God tell you to do it? Did God tell you I was going to have a baby? I'm not going to tell you you're going to have a baby if that ain't what God showed me. If, if the God didn't reveal to me that he opened your womb, and in the next couple of months, you should bear a child, then I'm not going to prophesy that. I can pray for you if that's what you desire and if that's what you want to bear a child and you may be barren. I can say, I'm not going to prophesy that. Oh, yeah, and I see you with a baby in the next couple of I can come in agreement to pray that the Lord open your womb, that you will bear a child. But I'm not just gonna prophesy that over your life. Even even I, I've even learned that in uh, prophetic training, you know, even with that, you have to be careful when you say you see somebody getting married. See, you got to be careful of that because you may not know as a prophet that may be a desire that someone has, and then to hear you say that. They're going to get happy and excited. And they're going to look for that marriage to come. 
So it's important that you be wise even when you prophesy. Pray and ask God to help you to be one that be detailed and be accurate that you can even prophesy into timing. Because share with the woman of God how the Lord showed me that even when you prophesy, you, you got to be able to distinguish the time and the season. You got to be able to know if God is allowing you to prophesy something within the now or in the past tense or even in the future of that person's life. Because you don't want to give somebody the word of the Lord and then, but you say, um, th this is something you don't want to do. I don't know when and how it's going to happen, but I do see you being mad. The Lord, I, I, well, did the Lord show you that or is that something you're just saying? Be a little bit more accurate. The Lord showed me where you're going to travel the world and you want to do some things. And then within the next five years, the Lord said he's going to bless you with your husband. That's an accurate prophecy towards marriage. Not just throwing it out there. I don't know in the next um, years or so. I don't know who he is. I don't know, you know, where he at. But I know you do, you, you are going to get married. You got to be very, very careful in those areas when you speak in something, especially when you hashtagging to be a prophet of the Lord. Because they might be awaiting for that marriage to happen and take place. What you can let them know is, is start preparing yourself. God says, start prepar preparation. Start preparing yourself. Start getting ready. Because you know more than what the prophet know if that is a desire for you to get married. You know more than what they know. You may already have your month picked out. God don't always give that to the prophet. He may already allow you to have your month and your date picked out. Sometimes he will. But nevertheless, you got to be careful because, see, you'll say that and put that out there and that person goes into expectation. And then after a while, a year passed by, two years done passed by, they on their third year, they might run into you again. And they might say, remember you gave the word of the Lord telling me I was going to get married? Child, I ain't never got married. You got to know when to release it. And the Holy Spirit will make you aware when to release that to someone's life. So Micaiah made it plain to them and he let them know, listen, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, and I understand that's what you want me to do, but I'm gonna only say what God had me to say. I'm gonna only do what God tell me to do. I ain't gonna follow y'all up. I'm gonna just say what God had me to say. And it says right here, it says, when Micaiah arrived before the king Ahab, Ask him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilgad or should we hold back? Micaiah. It freeze me, but somebody was calling me. I don't know if it froze me or not. Did it freeze me, Ashley? It did. Okay. I didn't, I, somebody was trying to call me. Am I still frozen? I'm unfrozen? We can hear you now. Okay, okay. Okay, so it says right here, he says, yes, go up and, and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. But the king replied sharply, how many times must I go? He said, how many times, I'm sorry, how many times must I demand that you speak <laughs> only the truth to me when you speak for the Lord? Now, this the king replying back to him in a sharp tone, in a sharp manner. And you know why the king replied back to him? Because the king was aware and known that this was a true prophet, that anytime he spoke and he prophesied to me, it was none, nothing other than the truth. I didn't want to hear it, but because it was God speaking, 
It was true. He never prophesied nothing different to him. He never replied nothing different to Ahab. So Ahab knew, watch this. Abraham knew that Micaiah was off when he came into agreement with the other prophets. Because he stopped him and he applied to him in a sharp manner, in a sharp tone, and let him know, how many times must I demand you to tell me the truth and say what God will have you to say? See, he was already familiar with how he prophesied. And he know that when he opened his mouth and spoke, it was for God and nobody else. Then Micaiah told him, in a vision I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. Didn't I tell you? The king of Israel explained to Jehoshaphat. He never prophesied anything but trouble for me. See, he was familiar, so he knew when Micaiah said what he said. Come on, give me the real miss of what you see. Give me the truth. Don't come into agreement. Don't flip flam me. Don't try to make me believe when I know that you see well. See, he was a, Micaiah was a seeing prophet. Not only was he a true prophet of God, but it's safe to say he, he was a seeing prophet because he told him what he saw. He said, okay, you want me to give you the truth? Here it is. The Lord put me in a vision and he showed me that this is what was going to happen. They was going to lose their shepherd. My God, he says right here, verse 18, did I tell you the king of Israel exclaimed to Jehoshaphat, he never prophesied anything but trouble for me. Then Micaiah continued, listen to what the Lord says. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the armies of heaven around him, on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilgad so he can be killed? <laughs> there were many suggestions. And finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. How will, how will you do this? The Lord asked. And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. I will go out and inspire all Ahab prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see, this is verse 23. So you see that the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. Then Zechariah, son of Kenanai, walked up to Micaiah and slapped him <laughs> across the face. I'm laughing because, okay, you ask for it, I deliver it, but then you get mad because I proceeded out to tell you the truth and what Lord, what the Lord has shown and revealed to me. And so now you get mad and you get upset. Now you want to fight? My God. It says right here, it says, <clears throat> since, since when did the spirit of the Lord leave me to speak to you? He demanded, and Micaiah replied, you will find out soon enough when you are trying to, to hide in some secret room. Arrest him, the king of Israel ordered. Take him back to Ammon, the, govern, the governor of the city, and to, and to my son, Joash, 
Give him this order from the king. Put this man in prison and feed him nothing but bread and water until I return safely from battle. But Micaiah replied, if you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added to those standing around, everyone mark my words. See, <laughs> he had to, I will finish the rest of that. Micaiah had to be redirected and pulled out of the persuasion. See, remember the messenger wanted him to be in agreement with the other 400 prophets and say, yeah, this is, he gonna get victory, he gonna get victory. But see, once the Lord took him into the vision and showed him that when they go up to the mountains, that the people was gonna be scattered and they was gonna lose their master because he was gonna be killed. But the people was gonna return back in peace. The Lord took him a little further to say what thus says the Lord. And they got mad with him. They got upset, but this is what you asked for. And then Ahab in turn tells Jehovah, Jehoshaphat, now you see why I don't let this prophet prophesy nothing to me? He never says anything good to me. He never lets me know it's going to be well for me. In other words, Micaiah was a prophet that always came and weathered bad news, but it was the truth. When you are a true prophet of the Lord, some people are just not going to like your truth. They are not going to like you, period. They are not going to like who you are in God. And they are most definitely not going to like that you are the one that God has chosen. See, he was, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Oh, it's safe to say that the prophets that Ahab had, they were uh, false prophets. Woman of God, and you let me know, you back me up on that. It's safe to say we talk about 400 prophets. Oh, glory to God. But they were false prophets. Yes, they were. They gave a false hope to the man of God that if I go up and I fight these people to take this land and take this territory, oh, I'm coming out. I'm going to live and I'm going to live to see it and be in it. But when the true prophet of God stepped on the scene and let him know, no, 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 that's not so. That's not what the Lord showed me. That's not what the Lord has revealed to me. And I have to be the one to let you know, if you go to this battle to fight, you will not come back. Your people will, but you won't. Now I can imagine this probably caused some friction between Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Because see, it probably wanted, uh, it probably made Jehoshaphat, well, let's just hold off from even going to battle. But see, Ahab was so adamant in taking and getting the land back. And not only that, he had a whole 400 other prophets that brought him into the persuasion of believing that, yeah, you going to fight. Yeah, we done made the horns for you. All you got to do is jig them and stab them and kill them up. And you going to come out on top. You going to come out victorious. You going to win the battle. That probably made him want it to go even the more. But Micaiah told him, if I be a true prophet of the Lord and you come back alive, then I mean I lie. <laughs> and that means God had to deal with him. And he was so sure to say, Mark, he said, everyone, Mark my words. That means you can put a stamp on it, that the approval of God rests on it, that if this man go up the battle to fight, he's going to lose his life. So in my conclusion to this matter, I hope you are able to understand even the more now what is a 
lying prophet? <laughs> what is a false prophet? And what is a true prophet of the Lord? Because here we see that Micaiah, he was tried to be swayed in to coming into agreement. But he realized his relationship and his connection with the most true God. And Ahab himself realized and known him to be a true prophet of the Lord. And he knew that anytime Ahab opened his mouth and said, what well, thus says the Lord, it was real, it was accurate. And even though it may have made him felt like I can never get a good prophecy, but he knew the prophecy was definitely from God. That's right. So I just want to encourage you, especially for those of you that may be new and to the prophetic, don't come into it ignorant. If you know someone that you're connected to and they're a little bit more seasoned than you are, humble yourself to rest under them so that you, you can gain the knowledge and the teaching and the training. Let that prophet that may be a little bit more seasoned than you pour into you. Let them show you and, and walk you through the word of God, showing you that this stuff is real, that witchcraft is real, false prophets are, are real. And they will gravitate to the prophets of God because they have one agenda and that agenda is to destroy you and rip you of the anointing of God. I, I thank God. Let's give God a hand clap of praise, y'all. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, this was so... You know, the same one, my daughter just went in access. I'm sorry. Amen. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Amen. Well, we are so blessed by you, Prophetess Yalissa Brown Jones. Thank God for the rich word that you have delivered unto us today. You said so much. I mean, so much. Getting down into the meat, amen, and the weightiness of the topic, and we are so blessed, so blessed by you and your ministry, amen, glory be to God, so amen. what I hear you, what I heard you saying was, um, in a nutshell, that prophets who lie are not typically false, though what they mm -hmm. said was false, is that mm -hmm. Wow, wow, exactly. Wow. And that is so true because you know that prophets are human as well. And mm -hmm. we can be presumptuously, which means speaking very arrogantly, or before, like you said, time or mm -hmm. amen. Or we don't sit in the presence of the Lord or in prayer to allow God to give us the full interpretation of what He's declaring over to us. See, what I have uh, realized is that a lot of prophets will prophesy, watch this a word that God is still processing in them. And so because the word has yes. not been fully processed, they release it before the finishing of the download and it gets us in a lot of trouble. And so and so that is one thing that we really, really have to have to be aware of. Um, you said so much, so, so rich. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But one thing I love what you said is that even if we as prophets hold a lie, be sure to repent. That's it. Yes. Don't allow no one yes. to feel as if you are false or that God is not with you or that you are no more good in the prophetic. Just because you told a lie, amen, just repent and let God continue to use you in his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. So, um, a young lady on Facebook, she asked a question. Um, her name is Hope King. And she said, how do you separate the two? Prophet from false prophet. And um, basically what I heard you teach was that uh, what separates the two is just the source from which you get their information. 
basically. Exactly. Yes. 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 Because uh -huh. uh, you have uh, Abraham himself, true prophet, and the king, um, uh, Ambalak, he knew that he was a prophet. He was called by God. Uh -huh. And he was able to identify you a man of God. Mm -hmm. He said it in the scripture. You are a prophet of God. So how be it that you told this lie? And Abraham replied to him and he said, well, you know, I thought this was a godless place. But he didn't know that the king was in relationship with God to know. How was the king in relationship with God to know? Because the spirit of God came to him in a dream. Mm -hmm. The king was asleep. And the spirit of God came to him in a dream and made known to him, listen, yes, he's a man of God. Yes, he's chosen and called by me. Yes, I sent him there. Mm -hmm. But he's lying to you about his wife. Why did Abraham lie about his wife? Because he knew, I'm sorry, y'all, my nose is itching. <laughs> I know I'm not superstitious. <laughs> he, um, he, you know, because of the beauty of his wife, mm -hmm. it put him in a fearful place. And he began immediately to think of a way, I got to protect her. Mm -hmm. So the only way I know how to protect her is to say, this is my sister. Because I, if I say she's my wife, they might take my life and kill me and they take my wife. So Abraham was put in a place to where he did not want to jeopardize and lose his wife and his own life. So that's why he told the lie. The lie was built off of fear and assumption. Hmm. That was a lie. Now, okay, watch this. The Bible did not say Abraham was one that pulled out his little God and prayed. I'm just using my phone as an example. And prayed to his little God and asked his little God, you know, to show him, you know, whether or not what they're going to do to me. Nine times out of ten, majority of the time, false prophets. They don't pray to our God. Yeah. They don't hear from Holy Spirit. So they pay, pray to an idol God, a false something that ain't even real to respond and talk back to them. Mm -hmm. That's how you will know the difference. They go on a hunt and a search to uh, seek out the psyche. And a person that go to them and look to them for answers the false prophet not going to come out and say, well, did you seek God? Did you pray? They're not going to tell them that because they themselves don't have a relationship with God. Right. See, that's how you'll know they're a false prophet. They're not called by God and they're definitely not in a relationship with God. But can they hear God? Yes, they can. They them heard God clearly. And it, it was numerous times where he told Balak, let me go seek God. Amen. Let me go hear what God is saying. Mm -hmm. So, basically, so that, that's a clear indication to let you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not have to be in a relationship with God, but as long as you acknowledge God, oh, he's going to talk to you. Oh, yes, he will. I hope that helped her out a little bit so she'll be able to know the difference. Amen, amen. So basically, as you just said, the true prophets of God um, will be the God that they pull their source from God while false prophets get their information through charms or soothsaying, divination, mm -hmm. etc. And this is the major difference. Um, something else that you said that was very encouraging um, through your uh, teaching on today was that even though um, Abraham had messed up. God has still blessed him. Mm -hmm. God blessed him with the <laughs> battle, the oxen. And so this is also something that I see in the body of Christ is that as soon as someone knows that a prophet of God may have missed it, they try to put themselves as God to strip that prophet of their prophetic duty. And mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. it, 
God still blessed Abraham, even though he messed up uh, with oh, God, exactly. saying that Sarah was his sister and not his wife. Amen. Mm -hmm. God, you mean God won't stop blessing you just because you have error in your life. As said before, exactly. make sure that you repent and that you get things right with God. Amen. Amen. We are not out of word, but out of time. This was so good, Prophet. It's very, very good. How can people reach you in case they want to bring you to speak at their church or on their platform? Um, how could they reach you? Do you have an email? They can reach me. Um, I have a um, my Facebook page. I have my ministry page is Pushing Past Your Past. And that's Pushing Past P-A-S-S -S, Your P-A-S-S. T. The, the past is different. It's two different types of past. You have like the past where you're going through something and then you have the past of your past, what's behind you. Um, a lot of times I have to specify that to people because they'll, they'll put push your past, your past. And I'm like, no, it's two different passes. You got to catch that. And so um, I'm on Facebook um, with that. That's my group page, Pushing Past Your Past. Um, I'm also on um, Snapchat and Instagram. Um, my Instagram is uh, Prophetess Ulisa Brown. Okay. Uh, I still got it all. It's all one word together. Uh, if you look for me on Instagram, it's all one word together, Prophetess Ulisa Brown. Um, you can find me that way. Um, for those of you in the local area of Savannah, um, you, I have my personal Facebook page um, where it's Ulisa Brown. Okay. Um, you can reach me through that way as well. Um, um, this is so many different ways, you know. Yes. Also, <laughs> um, do you have a cash app or something that people could be a blessing to you? I know um, this platform was totally blessed by you. Amen. Um, yes, I do. Amen. I do. Um, my cash app is dollar sign um p p y p and that's all capital letters okay so um uh, prophetess Ulysses the cash app is dollar sign p p y p and mm -hmm. i've never done this before amen but i was so so blessed by all sessions but amen this one i mean i was just totally blessed and um we want the people of god to have an opportunity to sow into your ministry amen because you're amen good Amen. Glory to God. I heard you say something at the end that you wanted to pray over the ear gates, the mouth, and the eyes. Yes. And yes. I'm let Prophetess Yalissa pray over us. And uh, thank you all for joining us. I am so blessed to have you all that were on uh, Facebook, also Zoom, and the U.S. Conference line. We run it through three. Amen. Days. Yes. Amen. This is for those who are not computer savvy. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, Amen. All for your participation. Don't forget, we have this every month, once a month. Next month's speaker is none other than Pastor Chandra P. Amen. Amen. The topic for next month is profits. Put up your cash apps and let's get to work. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come back the spirit of greed, not preaching for money, as I have seen this in and I mean time and time again. And this is something yes. that is coming after because what God spoke to me was that the next set of prophets whom He is raising up for this next hour will not be controlled by the dollar. Ah, God come on now. It's positioning. I feel the anointing of God. God hmm. positioning Jesus. the prophets. Glory to God to be in a state of wealth. Amen. Through investments. Come on, somebody. Real estate. Come on. Please come on here, somebody. Stocks and bonds. Mm. Amen. So that we will not be controlled by what it is that God is mandating for us to speak in this. Yes. We are in the last of the last days. Amen. And we are yes. of God. We have a mandate from God to open wide our mouth and to cry out and to spare not. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be to God. So I am so blessed. Thank Jesus. God for Shemarit. Good to see you, God's sister. Love you so very mm. much. Amen. Shemarit. <laughs> yes, God. Just giggling and thank God for Prophet Sharon. Amen. And um, yes. thank God for all those who came on and had to 
a chime off. We also want to thank God for um, missionary Jasmine Miller for her ministration and leading us into prayer. God bless her. We're yes, awesome prayer. Yes, and also Queen Jamia uh, that jumped on. I want to uh, make sure that I get this to you all that Queen left, just in case I know you guys were blessed by her ministry. Yes, she definitely has a beautiful voice. Yes, let me um get this to them quickly, Prophets, before you move into prayer. Um, hallelujah. Queen Jamia has a song called Lost and Found, and you can go on all musical platforms, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, etc., to find it. Amen. So we thank God for having the ministry. Without further ado, God bless you. If you're not busy tomorrow, I am preaching. Amen. On the hour of power. Amen. With true healing ministries. You'll find details on my Facebook page. Glory to God. And we'll love to have you chime in. It's on the phone, a conference phone line. Okay. And there is a word from the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Prophetess Yalissa. Please pray over us and then we are dismissed. I love you all. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this session, Lord God. We thank you, God, for the visionary that you have allowed to put this together, Lord God, to help increase our knowledge and knowing, God, the difference, God, being able to decipher, Lord God, what's real and authentic and what's what's false and fake, Lord God. God, I thank you, God, for each Zoom caller, God, each Facebook person, Lord God, even with the uh, phone conference, Lord God. I thank you right now for every person, God, that was on and had to get off and those that are yet still even on, Lord God. I thank you right now for covering their ears, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that they will hear you, Father, and your voice alone, they will obey, God. For your word says, my sheep know my voice and no other voice they will follow. Father, I thank you right now, Father God, for just covering their eyes, Father God, that they they will be able to see in the realm of the spirit, Lord God, and not be afraid of what they see, Father God. God, I thank you, Father God, God, for just covering their mouth, oh God. Those that you, you have chosen and deemed, God, to be your mouthpiece, God. Those that you have put in position to be your prophets, Lord God. They will have clean hands and a pure heart, Lord God. Even those that you call to minister to your people, Lord God, they won't take it lightly, Lord God, but they will endow themselves, Father, even the more to be in your presence, Lord God. I thank you for every person, Lord God, through the airwaves, God, of the social media, oh God. I thank you, Father God, for enhancing this woman of God's ministry, Lord God. Thank you for taking it to another level, Lord God. God, and now I prophesy, Father God, that the blessings of the Lord shall be upon each every individual, Lord God. That the blessings of the Lord shall make it them rich and add of no sorrow. I thank you, Father God, that they will operate and move into sound doctrine in this next season, Father God. They will stand bold and flat-footed against the enemy. And they will know, Father God, it is you that is keeping them and carrying them, Lord God. Even in this next season, as you continue to prune them, sharpen them, develop them, even the more, God. And they will walk boldly, God, in the things that concern your kingdom. We bind the hand of the enemy right now. We bind up the tactic of fear that will cause lies to develop. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we bind up the tactics of consumption that will cause their minds to wander and not be sure. Yeah. But God, we stand on your word Matthew 6 and 33 says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added so father will seek you throughout the day God so that we can obtain more of your wisdom more of your knowledge more of your understanding God and God keep us in right alignment with you father now as we depart off of this zoom father god keep yeah. us god as we go into various places yeah. oh god let our light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our father whom which is in heaven we bind the hand of the wicked one now in jesus name we plead the blood 
and we seal this prayer with the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. God bless you all. I love you all. Yes. Again, Prophet Ashley, I thank God for your life. Um, I thank God for the connection, and I know that there's many more things to come yeah. for us to do, and um, I love you. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you so much. Don't forget, if you want to be a blessing to the woman of God, the prophet of the hour, amen. Her cash app is dollar sign P-P-Y-P. -P. Amen. God bless you. I love amen. you. And go in peace. Until next time. Peace. Amen. Amen.